Welcome to episode two of Searching for MacGuffin with your hosts, George, Gabe, and Link. Today's topic, we're continuing with our top fives, and we are discussing video games. So, let's get right to it. Yes, all right, so I'm going to start it off once again. And in my top five favorite video games, like I said, it's not... <laughs> these are the games that produce the most joy, that spark the most joy in my heart. And for, I have, my first one is Stardew Valley. Hmm. If you've never played it, it's a farm simulating game. It's much more than that. It's a little bit of Animal Crossing. It's a little bit of Minecraft. Uh, Harvest Moon. It's just a beautiful amalgamation of so many games. And it's, I love the game. I love it. It's 8-bit, 16-bit. I'm not sure what's the difference there. I think it's 16-bit. Yeah, 16-bit. Yeah. But I love the game. It's so much fun. In fact, I love the game so much that I bought it like five times. I got it when it came out on Steam on my my computer. And then I bought it when it came out for the Switch. And I invested like 200 hours on it. And then I saw that it came out for the Xbox. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to buy it. And I wanted wanted George to play it. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to buy it for him. So I bought it on Xbox for you as well. Yeah, thanks to you, we own this game like five times, and I haven't started it yet. <laughs> but like, because we, we share with the Apple family, and then you got it for me on Xbox. Yeah. And then I think it was on sale for Switch, and I just went ahead and got it anyways. So I was like, on Switch. I got it for you. On the oh, Switch. on the Switch. Oh, okay. I think you're single handedly keeping that. Yeah. Up. Yeah. <laughs> hey, bro. Concerned ape. I love that guy. So the problem, the reason why I haven't started it is because everybody keeps telling me this is something to play with your girlfriend and wife. So it's like, this is the next game. For my wife, but it's like it the next game for me and my wife, like forever. So I can't start it alone because I know it's a deep. Also, single and yeah, you co-op. Are, you don't need a no, but they're two different modes, right? Yeah, it's and I, you yeah, but I'm not like you. I don't need seven thousand. I don't have seven thousand hours to commit to this game, so I'm gonna play the co-op. So I'm I'm waiting for that. Nerve to play it. Yeah, that might be true. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just love that game so much. Like I said, about the computer switch place i mean xbox and i ended up getting it on the phone <laughs> you bought it for playstation even yeah. though you don't own it no, i mean they get it for playstation they keep on supporting the guy and the cool thing about this game is that it's by one guy the w- one guy does everything on the game they yeah. really are like single head from keeping this guy like, <laughs> no. Good job. other no the game he works for you basically <laughs> he 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 reads my notes you should invest in <laughs> this company right but no, I really enjoy that game. So yeah, for me, Stardew Valley. What about you, Gabe? All right, I'm going to start off on a similar trend how I did the comics, and that's going to be another Batman uh, title. Wow. It's uh, going to be Arkham City. I mean, uh, the whole Arkham series is fantastic, but if I had to pick one, it'd be Arkham City. Trying to cheat like me? Okay. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, but spe- obviously, specifically Arkham City, just um, the whole... Batman in a video game by a good game studio yeah. and Arkham Asylum, fantastic game. But I think we were talking about this before, how we were kind of limited with, mm-hmm. with Asylum. Well, that. what I love about Asylum is that it is so claustrophobic and it's exactly what you want Arkham Asylum to feel like. Yeah. So it's perfect for what it is. But opening up that city is so much more. It's like, a great way to continue. It. Yeah. So the escalation. I'm, I mean, I have it on my list as well too. Arkham City, same thing. The Arkham series. I recommend all of them. Even even Origins, which never got re released. I know it was a little buggy, but some of the 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 story, the voice work, the cinematics, and and it built a lot on what City was. It didn't really push it forward, and it wasn't rock steady, so it wasn't as polished. But just that Arkham series in general was great. And City, I think, is the apex. Night is amazing as well too. And it's next gen, but City I think is like the pinnacle. Like, yeah. there's nothing like that first, like that first yeah. dance. And I agree. You guys yeah. are gonna hate me, but I've never played the Arkham. What? Yeah. Huh? I can't played. even believe that. Yeah, that... I never have. I never got, into it, never got around it. <laughs> you definitely need to. And we have a uh, the, the whole tr- trilogy. Yeah, remastered and is everything. It, is it on Game Pass? Uh, I I think it wasn't. I'm sure Something's if it is on now. Game Pass. Yeah, I think they, it goes on sale for like ten dollars the entire series. Like. Mm. All the time. Yeah, so, next time right wanna, so next time you want to start your third version of Stardew Valley, you can just start playing the <laughs> No. I'm going to play Stardew Valley like in a year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well then that was next on my list. I guess I'll go ahead with my second title. Mm-hmm. Then since I'm always falling behind on the list, I'll, I'll, I'll take point. Um, Burnout Paradise. Oh, I hate that game. 
I love that game. Why? You, what? you ruined it for me. Uh, you made me love that game. So okay. you're on two <laughs> sides of the spectrum here. Okay. So, Burnout Paradise. And when I thought about this, I was like, is this a Dark Horse thing? Is it just me? Why? How did I even get this game? Why did I have a racing card game? Uh, you know, I, I have some racing card games. I'm not super into them. But the Burnout series. Burnout 3, Takedown. Uh, they're just great series of games. But Paradise is open world. And I think this is a theme you're going to see on my list. Just like Arkham City opened up Batman to an open world, Burnout Paradise gave me a time to be on every street of the city. It gave me, um, you know, a a record to be. Every stoplight is another race. It's just do it at your own pace, however you want to do it. And that kind of freedom is something that I really look for in gaming. And that's why I bought in Burnout Paradise like three or four times. And then I also thought, Maybe it's not just me because it's been remastered and re-released a bunch of times. So I guess there's an audience for it. But Burnout Paradise is one of my all-time favorite games. Yeah, it ruined Paradise City for me. The song <laughs> Paradise City by Guns N' Roses. <laughs> well, that is one of the few flaws of it. I don't understand why it has to play it every single right? time you boot up the game. You're in paradise, all right? <laughs> I guess, well, I guess though, like living in Miami, they're constantly playing uh, that Miami song over and over again, right? That's what life here in Miami is up now. The Will Smith one? Yeah, the Will Smith one. Yeah. Oh. Well, actually, okay, after the Will Smith song, that did literally happen. They were just constantly playing the Miami song. Oh, yeah. Song. And the people that are not from Miami, they'll just be like, they'll know, you'll hear you're from Miami, yeah. and then they'll just like start playing as, like, hey, this is your song, right? And you're just yeah. like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So maybe home. that's what it is. It was just that real, like, it, that real yeah, experience of, okay. Yeah. Well, burnout, burnout paradise. I'm actually yeah. not a fan of car like racing games. Period. Yeah. So, Forza. And I understand that. Uh, ex- exception to Mario Kart. But. <laughs> but this game, this was a, this game also. It was one of the first games that had like continuous support. Like they had a DLC and like they added cops and robbers. They added like this whole other like stunt island. And they kept updating, and they had like a huge, like three gig. They maintained, uh, yeah, they maintained it. And I think mm-hmm. they they had the DeLorean, they had the Ecto One, they had you know these like epic, iconic cars like being re released, like a version of the Batmobile. I did love, yeah, yeah. So I agree. that was fantastic for me. All right, what's your name? Okay, stop us on. No, so. So it was in the band, over here in the band. Oh, got it. Okay. Cut, edit. All right. So, what's next on your list, Link? So, for me, on my list, I have the Red Dead Redemption series. I couldn't pick between one or two. Uh, two or three, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, technically. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. I never played. Red Dead Revolver. Revolver. I never played. So, yeah, Red Dead 1 and 2. Yeah, right. 1 and 2. Uh, I love that series so much. It's one of my favorite. I remember when 3. I, when two came out, I played it. All I did was hunt. That's all I did for like the two days mm-hmm. after I got it. Just hunted, and because uh, it was so terrifying going hunting uh, the lions, and they were so quick. But I love that game so much. And the story, I love John Marston. Ah, he's one of the greatest cowboys of all time, right? And then I don't know how, but you were somehow able to create. They, they, Rockstar created Red Dead Redemption Two, added a whole new character, and I as I love them as much as John Marston. I love Arthur Morgan; he is so good. And uh have you have you guys played Red Dead Two? Yes. Uh, no. Oh, so you don't know what happened? So no. So Red Dead is it's also on my list, and it's one of my favorite games of all time. It might be my favorite game of all time until maybe recently. We'll talk a little bit about that later, but. I loved it. When I got Red Dead 2, I was like, all right, this is it. I'm going to dedicate the like 200 hours that I dedicated into Red Dead. And I was just like, I don't know, I guess I'm at an age where I played like the first 30, 45 minutes of it. And I was like, is this game going to start though at some point? Yeah. You know? <laughs> so I was like, I'm like basically playing like a super long tutorial slash movie. I just felt like I was in a movie. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like the hateful eight. Yeah. So I definitely have been sleeping on it. I have it. It's summer now. I should prioritize it. But I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready for the time sink because I know I'm going to get drawn into it, you know? And I'm gonna, and, but and the emotional, yeah, and then that too, because like Red Dead One wrecked me, yeah. So get prepared to get wrecked. <laughs> so, but yeah, I totally get where you're coming from. Red Dead is on my list as well. Yeah, so I, I yeah, I love Red Dead, Cowboy. It's literally a Cowboy, uh, GTA. So yeah. What about yeah. you? What about you, Gabe? 
Yeah, so for me, next up on my list, uh, it's probably one of the first shooters um, mm. that I played. That'd be Halo, mm. the original Halo. Actually, well, Combat Evolved was, has, is a very special place in my heart. It was the, probably the biggest PC game that I played at the time. And Halo 2 is, is up there mm. for this one. It's probably one of the first console games I played. And just in between those two games, there was, there was so much um, fun that I had by myself in combat evolved and then playing with other people in halo 2 and that continued on in the halo series after that mm, yeah um, it was just it was so much fun it was like an event like a soul the soul like i i believe like the gamer that i am today um i really focus on the social aspect unless it's like a title that like i know that i want to play on my own and things like that but i've noticed that i really enjoy playing with other people the the social aspect of games how it brings you together you you share laughs and taking on people carrying out objectives and things like that and that's something that that grew from Halo mm. playing multiplayer and I remember in in Halo three when Halo three released I remember we went to Mer George and a couple of other members of our family we went to uh, GameStop for the midnight release and it was a school night for me and I was about probably in middle school at that age. And so, yeah, middle school, they're playing Halo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so we went to GameStop, we waited till midnight, we picked up the copy, and then we went back. And once we got uh, back home, it, the, the, the house that we went to, it was packed. Like, there were so many people there just to just to watch people play this game. Yeah. Uh, people play Halo. And I think that was one of the, well, it was one of the, the Halos that you play co-op. It's the way the campaign, yeah. the campaign was fully co-op flavor. Right. And so I got to play maybe one or Which two I levels. Miss. I miss a lot from a lot of modern games. I agree. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree. And I remember playing the, the co-op and I got to play like one or two levels. And then my dad pulls me away. He's just like, hey, like, it's time to go to sleep. You got school in the morning. <laughs> and I was so disappointed. Like, I mean, I was in middle school. And I was like playing. Like, I was pretty, I was pretty good at the game. So having everyone like kind of watch me play, kind of like cheering me on and stuff like that it, it, i felt special like it made me feel special and and then for my dad to just rip that away uh it was it sucked but after that um i ended up going back to the game and getting to the final level in the final cutscene. i remember that there was like you have to like cross this bridge right and so when you're crossing that bridge uh me and my uncle my other uncle jonathan who i was playing with at the time we both ended up getting like uh, hit by like one of those like gravity hammers, mm -hmm. and it threw us both on each side of the bridge. And the respawn when we were, when you died, you respawned. When we responded, when we when we respawned, it was us falling mm. constant over and <laughs> over oh, and no. over again. And I lost it. I I tossed the controller on the couch and I washed it out. And so I you never beat it. I beat it eventually like, later on when I had cooled down just because I was so frustrated with that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Halo for me is is a it's got to be up there. It's a it's kind of like a defining game for me as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm not super into shooters, but Halo. Yeah, but Halo almost made my top five because of that social aspect. Like I had um, I had a colleague of mine tell me this day. You know, when you guys were younger, I remember taking my younger brother over to your house and there was just multiple TVs and projectors set up. There was 16 of you guys, <laughs> you know, guys and girls just connected on Xboxes. And I, I think at that time you connected them with LAN cables, yeah, right? LAN parties. Yeah. So it was basically a LAN party on Xboxes playing Halo, you know, Halo 2, I believe. Right. Yeah. Halo 2 and 3. And it was like, and I was like, these guys are crazy. What is this? What kind of a birthday party or what kind of a weekend, you know, is this? And then they're like, and now my kids, this is all they do. <laughs> they're like, oh, what do you want to do for a birthday? I want a LAN party. I want multiple screens. I want my friends to come over and we play games. And it was like, wow, that like that cultural shift where it's like the norm now. It's but it was, really I'm thinking, wow, we went through a lot of trouble because it was a lot of yeah. trouble to hook up that many people. Yeah. yeah pre-internet basically right because yeah, least... everyone was basically like an it expert at that point trying to figure out <laughs> you had connection issues you were just like i have a degree in computer science like, <laughs> <laughs> and that party aspect again i think it also defines me as well because it goes into my next title which is rock band 
mm. the Rock Band series, particularly Rock Band Two, um, and then Ro- and then Rock Band Three as well when they added keys and harmonies. Um, I remember just Rock Band nights at my house. This is like this was a serious thing. I know Guitar Hero was like a big craze, and I loved Guitar Hero One and Two, but when Harmonix left and created Rock Band and took it in a completely different direction, I was all in. I was like, I bought the $200 box. You know, I had the drums. I had three mics. Before they even added harmonies in three, I had a splitter so that two mics would input and you could sing yeah. simultaneously. You know, I, I, I mean, to this day, my closet's full of musical equipment, you know, like a, um, a mic stand, you know, splitters, audio outputs, legacy adapters, and people are like, Oh, oh, you do you do you record me? No, I play rock band. That's what I do. And it's been a while since I've had one of those off for obvious reasons, you know, but just the the DLC too. Like I would just buy. I, I started that was one of the games where I got really into buying DLC and just like making purchases, not just for me, but for other people. It's like, what are people gonna like when they come over? You know? Yeah. So you went from like a IT specialist to like a band manager. Yeah, I mean, I was like an event organizer too. <laughs> and I was like, everybody had their roles. I'm like, all right, I know these people are going to be singers. Team. Yeah, these people are going to be singers. These people are going to be guitarists. I had like a squad of drummers. We got the venue yeah. booked. We're all set. We're ready to go. Yeah. Um, sometimes we, I think one time we even set up two different setups and had like competing. We'd be playing the same song. Battle of the bands. Yeah, Battle of the Bands. So so it got pretty, it got pretty crazy. At some point. No, definitely. I, I remember those nights, those events, those concerts that we had. Those are just like, those are so much fun. Because that was another aspect where it's like, at that point in time, like I said, like I mentioned earlier, I was super into shooters. I was into Halo, playing all those games. And here comes this game where it's like, there's no music. And it actually defined a lot of my music taste because mm-hmm. I was pretty young at that age. Like, mm-hmm. It defined a lot of my music taste moving forward. To the point where I have a rock band playlist on my Spotify. Right, me, me too, on Spotify, yeah. Like, the music, I just, I can remember, for specific, for certain songs, mm-hmm. I can remember, like, playing that with family mm-hmm. members and friends, and just the experience that it that it uh, brought to us, like, that was so much fun. And even, I mean, it doesn't really get a lot of talk, but, like, even DJ Hero, too, like, that, yeah. was, that was pretty fun mm-hmm. for what it was. Like, it was just um, going from rock band to DJ Hero. Obviously not as big, but that was still something I was entertaining. That's true. Like, that music genre, like I remember, like I, I had friends who were really big into karaoke. I got lips, like and yeah. that was Xbox's thing. They had way better mics, you know. Yeah, that a lot of the, those musical that that boom in the music genre, it was fun. A solid choice. Music. A solid choice. All right, all right. Next on my list, I have Animal Crossing, specifically the one for the N- I mean for the GameCube. I think that's a lot of. I think that's a game where, that's a game that got me really into game, mean gaming, game, mm. gaming. Because I used, to, yeah, I used to play games, right, but not to, the, not to this amount, like not to this extent. It wasn't I, a commitment. It before. wasn't a commitment. Like I would, my life would revolve around Animal Crossing. Like Saturday nights, right. I, oh, yeah. I gotta be home because you know KK Slide is gonna pop up and I need to get that new song. <laughs> <laughs> And just the amount of hours I spent in Animal Crossing, and then when Wild World came out for the DS, I spent <laughs> a lot of hours there as well. And then City Folk, I didn't play that much. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That little, was for a week? That was for the week, yeah. yeah. I enjoyed it. I actually didn't play it as much. Do you think it was because of the platform or more? I think maybe because I got tired of playing a lot of Animal Crossing. Really? So, yeah, so I took a break and then it got back, went back into the new league. close to the Animal Earth. Crossing burnout. Yeah, yeah. yes. <laughs> Uh, and then, you know, this one, uh, New Horizons came out and I loved it as well. But yeah, to me, the, the, my favorite one is Animal Crossing, the one for the GameCube, because you should, you, it didn't get boring for me. Like, I could play Animal Crossing for a mm-hmm. while, but after, now it's like, alright, what am I supposed to do now, you get me? Because yeah. in that one, you can keep on doing favors after favors after favors until mm-hmm. you can build up your inventory, mm-hmm. money, and all that stuff. Yeah. Whereas this one, you don't do favors. Yeah. So it's something to do with it's the game. Kind of yeah, it's like, all right, I did it. Like, I can fart two hours a day. I'm, I'm done. All right. Whereas right. with the other one, I could spend six hours and, like, I can still do You more. basically keep grinding. Keep grinding, right? yes. Yeah. So, I, yeah, Animal Crossing is special in my heart. I love it. I mean, that was an all-time favorite. My love of Animal Crossing faded throughout the years. 
because I spent so many hours on the GameCube one. Mm -hmm. I, I had multiple memory cards so that I could have different memory towns. Cards. You know, I, I, I had a best friend, which was me on the other island who would visit to help myself on the other island, you know, and then my whole family was in it. My sister, my brother, they had their own, you know, their own island. And it was like, it was, wow. We didn't have game time counters. So it was probably like a thousand hours or something like that. Because it was literally like over a year of just Animal Crossing like yeah maybe even longer i don't even know just how many hours i sunk so i like burned out on animal crossing and i just i i didn't really check out the other titles until the pandemic hit this year and the new animal crossing came out and it was like all those memories again it's just like what you said like where i was like oh you know i can't i remember i remember i think i was in high school at the time right when the first animal crossing came what year is it do you know 2002 2002 so yeah so i was just graduating high school or just going into college right and I remember being like, no, nah, I can't do anything this Saturday night. Or, all right, let's go out. But if we can't make like an eight o'clock movie, then I'm not <laughs> going to go out. Yeah. Because KK is only till 11.59. Yeah. And if I'm not home by 10 or 10.30, then I'm just not going out tonight. <laughs> and it was, it was that crazy. And it would be like, oh, I have to do this because this season or this event. And like, but I was stuck at home this year. So it was the same thing. Like it was, and all those like memories came flooding back. So th this was like the second one I deep dive and kind of like refell in love with the series. Yes. That, Go ahead. And that's what I love about Wild World because it was for the DS, it was portable. So no longer did I have that problem. And yeah. One of my favorite things about video games is portability. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And that's why I think handhelds are my favorite. That's why the Switch is amazing. Yeah, the Switch is amazing. You know, I'm playing, oh, I gotta take a dump, take it home, take it in the bathroom. So I love that. Uh, but portability is my favorite, one of my favorite components when it comes to video games. Mm -hmm. So that's why handhelds are my favorite. And just the fact that I was able to, all right, now I don't mind. <laughs> My schedule doesn't necessarily revolve around KK on Saturday night. Right, anymore, exactly. I just open it up. Mm -hmm. That was a game changer for yeah. me. But to me, the the best one is the one for the GameCube. Okay, yeah. I mean, I even went back though after this one came out, and like for fifteen bucks, I picked up New Leaf on 3DS, and I started playing that one. Yeah, and so that one's a good one too. Yeah. I was yeah. playing Pocket Camp for a while because I kind of waiting for New Horizons to come mm -hmm. out. It wasn't the same, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, I definitely feel like with Animal Crossing. I mean, I was I was a casual. I, I wasn't like as invested. Um, for some reason, as a kid, I didn't like playing age appropriate games. I don't know why. <laughs> You're edgy. Yeah, <laughs> but I feel like Animal Crossing is one of those games that, even though you may not be quote unquote a gamer, that game still attracted a lot of people. Yeah. To it, like I remember, mm -hmm. like uh, your sister, um, she she wasn't like huge into games. Yeah. But I remember she spent a lot of time on that one especially mm -hmm. recently now yeah as an adult too and i have a lot of friends that um they bought switches for that game mm -hmm. yeah and i bought a second switch for that game <laughs> me so me and my wife we opened up the island and i was the um what's the title of the person the resident the resident representative yeah. right and then she's like oh there's a bunch of stuff i can't do and i was like i'm, I'm sorry and then she's like, I have all these ideas for the island. I'm like, we need another. We need another copy of this game. We need another Switch. We <laughs> yeah. literally bought another Switch for that same reason. Another copy of the game. You must have gotten it during, before the, like, they got, like, scarce. During okay. Well, game. actually, what had happened was the truth was that we bought the, when did Sword and Shield come out? That was before, right? Yeah, that was before. So I actually bought a second one knowing we would need a second one to play but we had to buy a second copy of the game which i did not anticipate yeah. because i didn't realize about the resident representative and all yeah. that yeah. i didn't think we need a whole other island i was like oh we'll share an island we share two islands now we both play on each other's island to support each other but yeah we have the two switches with the two with the two separate copies of the game commitment yeah what about you gabe what do you have next on your list on my list next i have soul Calibur. Ooh. Ooh. Sega Dreamcast, this game was another one that uh, was pretty pretty influential, um, especially when I was a kid. Um, a lot of people tend to gravitate towards Street Fighter or Tekken in those series, but for me, like Soul Calibur is just that game. My main was Killick, and then next up, Cervantes. Like those games for me, like that was a lot of fun, and that's partly because, or mainly because. That was a game that was another social type of aspect. My, it was my my dad's friends that would come over and play, and these were like adults. <laughs> and so, 
I I got used to like hanging out with like kind of older people and and just playing that as a as a kid, like just seeing the little animations on the on the little controllers. It's just it completed an experience for me that I mean carried on into the next because I love a lot of like the ones that that followed. So mm-hmm. Calibre Two especially is up yeah. there for me as well. And obviously, like once they start introducing like Link and Yoda and Vader, mm-hmm. then like it brought something that I was like, man, this is so much fun. Like being such a huge Star Wars fan and, and fans of other titles like that. It was something that I truly enjoyed as a kid and still carried carried out with me to this day. Yeah, Soul Calibur 2 just barely made the money. It hurt me so much to keep it out of the top five because it's the same thing. Like it was just endless multiplayer. And then the way that that series progressed, Soul Calibur 2, I think you're right, is the apex yeah. of it. Three is awesome with Vader and Yoda and Starkiller, but two with Link on the GameCube with um, with Spawn and Hayachi on other platforms is awesome too. But that specifically the GameCube version that we might never get again. Again, I'm like I pray to the the gaming deities that we could get like a Switch exclusive re-release <laughs> of Soul Calibur Two with Link again. But just being able to put him in that world, wow, what an amazing experience! And that kind of brings me to my next title, which is powered by that love of the Legend of Zelda series and. This is a very difficult pick for me because it's such a recent game. Um, and I think it beat out the rest of the games in the series. And it beat out what was like my favorite game of all time. It may be my favorite game of all time now. And it's so new. And that's so hard for me to admit. Yeah. that like Because usually I make the best ever. Like have to pass the test of time. But that game is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Indeed. Yeah, it's basically Red Dead Zelda. And, like, I didn't think Red Dead could get better, but if you put it in Hyrule, like... Without that, the guns, yeah. Yeah, without the guns. Oh. Cowboy hat. Well, they got some lasers. They got lasers, you know? Not from you. Not from you, but... Uh, but there's lasers shooting at you. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, you got your crossbow. Like, your crossbow is your gun, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, just, wow. What an, like, what an amazing game. It looks great. Like, I think it pushes the limits of the Switch hardware. Yeah. Um, just that open world aspect. You notice most of my top fives are open world games. And, like, it was that one missing component that I think the Zelda games, I love them to death. But open world Zelda, it was like a dream come true. And it was, it was one that I didn't even knew I had, that it was a dream that I wanted fulfilled. Because yeah. I never imagined it. I never imagined the that series going in that direction it's so different from the other games yeah yeah it's amazing i agree with you i think breath of the wild might be the best zelda game Mm -hmm. um i also have a zelda game well two zelda games in my on my list next um but i i I agree with you that's two because i can't pick yeah i understand uh but i agree with you that uh she just said the legend of zelda no i'm just kidding that's no no no, i do that i can't do i can't can't cheat i can't (laughs) go ahead but but i agree with you Breath of the Wild is the best Zelda game. I love it. It's amazing. I'm glad I was. I'm, I'm glad I was. What a time to be alive. Yeah. I'm glad I was alive. Yeah. Like throughout the history of the whole world, I was born when Breath of the Wild came out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, also I was between jobs in the sense that I left one school to start another school, and it came out right before the summer. Mm. So I, so I was like, okay, I have a whole new thing that I have to start, and I'm done with everything I was doing at the other school. So I literally have nothing to think about this summer. Two hundred and fifty hours. In the Legend of Zelda, and 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 I played it with my wife in the sense that we like took turns playing it, and it's just so gorgeous mm-hmm. and immersive that I don't even mind just watching somebody else play it. Yeah, no, yeah. So for me on my list, I have Ocarina of Time. It's I can, mm. I it used to be my favorite Zelda game. Yeah, I used, same. I used to think it was the best Zelda game until yeah. Breath of the Wild came out. Yeah. But it's actually a game that I I grew up watching my brother play. Mm-hmm. And I, I think, also grew up watching your brother. Play. Yeah, I think that's what got me into video games. Watching my brother, my brother play video games. Like I didn't like playing. I'm not that I didn't like playing. I should. I would rather watch him play. And it was. I just got into it. And then the other one for me, the other Zelda title is uh, Minish Cap because that was the first mm. Zelda game that I ever beat. Okay. So I felt like, man, what an accomplishment! Like it made me feel like my brother, who I looked up to. I'm like, man, I'm just like Pawn. I beat it. I beat a Zelda game, and I loved it. 
you know, now it's my time for my confession. I've never played the Minish Cap. That's on you, guys. Yeah, I never. <laughs> I fell off from the like that handheld era. So like the Minish Cap, Spirit Tracks. Nice, yeah. Um, what's the other Phantom Hourglass? They're mm-hmm. just sitting on my Wii U, like mm-hmm. as downloadable games. But I haven't. Like I, I didn't play the last. I played Minish Cap. But yeah. I didn't play the last. Time. I mean, I've heard they're all great. I know they're yeah. masterpieces, but I haven't experienced them. It's funny what you said about watching your older brother play. Watching your older siblings. Or like better friends play was like the original Twitch streams. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> I could honestly this, this with this generation watching Twitch like to me kind of doesn't make sense a little bit. But but like it make it just weird because I enjoy watching mm-hmm. my brother play. I don't enjoy watching everyone play. Right, I agree. I think maybe this like the societal aspect. Maybe they feel about those people the way we feel about our friends. Yeah, and friends, be, our yeah. actual human like yeah. in real life. But like yeah. I can watch. It's all, hard for me to connect. Yeah, like, yeah. I honestly. He ru- okay, so one thing I've noticed is that a lot, a lot of both both of you in the games that you guys picked, there a lot of there's a, a lot of the social aspect of it. That's what you guys like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the aspect I don't like about video games, <laughs> and that is because my brother ruined video games for me. Okay, he's so good at them, and growing up not being able to beat him always frustrated me. And, I can see that, <laughs> and to make things worse, he would like talk crap about it, like you know, tra- talk trash the whole time. Yeah, and I'm like oh. I get so mad. I get so mad. So it got to the point where I just played games, like single player games. <laughs> That's interesting. Now, <laughs> that, now that you mention it, comparing like, our list, like, think yeah. about look, Stardew Valley, Red Dead, mm-hmm. Animal Crossing, Zelda, all single player games. Yeah. Because I don't like playing with people because I'm scared they're going to ruin it for me. Yeah. But I do enjoy like Rock Band. Right. I, I enjoyed the land parties of, of Halo. And I enjoyed Call of Duty until my brother was well, for Yeah. Well, see, also what I like about gaming is the cooperative aspect. Like, I'm a big fan, especially now that I'm married. Mm-hmm. It was like, it's hard to put in, like, professional life and married life and gaming, like, where you squeeze it in. So I have to, like, gravitate towards those games. Which ones can I, like, convince my wife to play with me? Mm-hmm. You know? So it's like, I. that's why I love Nintendo, because they always... I mean, so many times they include those like cooperative modes, like whether it's uh, whether it's Let's Go Pikachu or it's uh, Luigi's Mansion or Super Mario Brothers or New Mario Brothers. There's a second player aspect, yeah. and some of them are simple, but at least it's there. I can play them with my niece, so I use that as an excuse. That's like bonding time, or I can play them with my wife. We'll take turns being the primary player, and it's okay for me to just be supporting in the supporting role. Because it, like you said, the joy that it brings. It yeah. brings me joy to see someone else enjoying playing the game. So that's why I'm, I'm a big fan of Nintendo. And like Breath of the Wild, I just watch you. I just watch my wife play it. Like, and when it got hard, then I get to take it. Then I get to <laughs> yeah. take on the challenge. So, yeah, what about you, Gabe? What's your next game? I think the the social aspect. I mean, continuing on that trend. For me, I think when I was around that, like younger, like around the time I started playing Halo and stuff like that. When I started transitioning actually into consoles, there was one game that kept me on PC, and that was Star Wars Galaxy. Mm. Star Wars Galaxies, I mean, I was obsessed with Star Wars, first and foremost, as growing up as a kid. My dad had all the toys and all that stuff, and he, I mean, my dad was a huge PC gamer, still is, and he had this game. Uh, he, he brought me one day, he brought me to the house, and he's just like, hey, um, I have this game I want you to try out. I want to play it together, see if you like it. And that game was Star Wars Galaxy. Mm-hmm. And we started, you have to create your character. You have to pick what yeah. you want to do. I'm obviously going to be a Jedi because who's not? If you're going to be about him too, yeah. that's obviously, yeah. It's definitely, but for me, it was a it was a Jedi. That was a no-brainer. And you start off, you have to train. You're kind of, you have to train as a Jedi. And then you go on this quest. Um, you have to like kind of like build a ship, and if my dad already had experience in the game, he already had build up um, his own ships, his own. Uh, he had his friends, he had a guild, and basically they would help us so I can level up faster. Mm-hmm. So we would take the ship, and I'd have to complete these the different quests. And I remember the the uh, one of the huge quests that I remember was building your own lightsaber. Right. Mm-hmm. You have to go to I believe it was Ellen to to find the kyber crystal yeah and you have to find the different parts for the lightsaber for the hilt and then once you like ignite the blade like that that was that was a special moment um 
rivaled only, I think, by going to Star Wars um, Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. Uh, making it yourself. Yeah, making it yeah. yourself and igniting it for the first time. And that left threw me back to to when I was a kid playing that with, with my dad and, and all of our friends on that guild in the chat. And like, it was just, it was for me such an immersive experience and probably one of my favorite games of all times. Uh, mostly just for the social aspect, obviously with my dad, but also um, with the world of Star Wars. Yeah, and just so many different quests, so many things that you have to do. It was huge, building your own ships, and you had so much freedom and to be creative and kind of just go like build your own path in the galaxy far, far away. That that for me was incredible, and yeah, that's why that that one comes up on my list. I'm I'm jealous of that experience because I never played Galaxies primarily by choice. Because I'm not allowed to play MMO RPGs <laughs> yeah. because it's kind of a rule that I have. Um, I never have because I know I will get sucked into it. I know I will lose my life, probably my job, my relationships. Um, so I did. It came and it went, and and I've heard it was awesome. I've seen, I saw your father play, and I, I know that that's good. It's funny that a Star Wars game didn't make my top five. And I have such a like rich history, like with Star Wars games. Um, I guess if they were honorable mention, Shadows of the Empire for the yeah, N64. I remember I drove over an hour to get my first Nintendo 64 games, and Shadow of the Empire was one of them, and uh, Mario 64 was the other one. And I was super <laughs> excited. Like that night of Christmas, I got it and no games, and I had to wait like 24 hours just staring at this box, like plugging it in and not being able to put anything into it. So Shadows of the Empire, GameCube had the the Rogue Squadron Rogue games, Squadron, that uh, awesome. yeah, Knights of the Old Republic. I played them on um, on Xbox. Um, you know, just just so many, so many games. Fallen Order now nowadays. I love Fallen Order. You I know, I recently beat it. Yeah, and even and now they've re released like limited run games. Re released like old Star Wars games for the Switch physically. And I was like uh, Jedi Outcast, um, the Episode One Racer. The only good thing to come Racer, out of Episode yeah. One, you know. Um, so I love Star Wars games, but my the last game on my list is what I consider one of the best games of all time, and it's one that I play I think almost every year because that's probably about as often as Nintendo re-releases it. <laughs> that's Super Mario World, and I buy it every time and I play it every time because this game was the first game that came with my Super Nintendo, mm -hmm. you know. And it was in a time where we we did not have a lot right. growing up during this time. And that was my first console, the Super Nintendo. I didn't grow up with the NES. Um, uh, my brothers all pitched in and bought us a Super Nintendo. And I played this game for hundreds of hours. Like, it took me months to beat this game, you know. And my cousin would play it. My older sister would play it. They'd stay up at night late. And I'd pretend to be sleeping because the SNES was in my room. But I'd be watching them play it. And it's funny now because now I put it up and I beat it like in one day, you know. You yeah. can beat it in like 45 minutes if you try you know, hard enough. I mean, I'm not that great of a gamer, but I can beat it in like 30 to 45 minutes. But this game was like all encompassing. And for a long time, it was my favorite game of all time. Super Mario World. I will, I will buy it and I will play it every time Nintendo has me, you know, just directly into my veins. Okay. Yeah. yeah. For me, my last game, it, like I said, I grew up watching my brother play video games. So for the longest, he had an N64. I really didn't touch it. I just watch him play video games. Perfect Dark. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Mario, all that stuff. In fact, I would buy, I would make him buy games, like rent games from Blockbuster, mm -hmm. beat them for me because so, I just wanted to watch him play. <laughs> <laughs> but it got to the point where my parents ended up get, buying me my own video game. And that was, I remember... Uh, December 25th, 1999, I got up, it was a Saturday, and I, I went to, I heard something moving, and I'm like, oh, Santa's here. <laughs> the six-year-old me was excited, so I went to go see what it was, and it was my mom, and she was coming, and I'm like, mom, what are you doing? Did you, did you yeah, see Santa? Did you see Santa? She's like, well, I did hear something. Not knowing that I, I had caught her. <laughs> but she played it off well, she was like, oh, no, I heard some, no one's here, look, I heard, there's something under the Christmas tree for you. And I see it, there's a box, I'm like, I wonder what this is. And I open it, and it's a Game Boy Color yellow Pikachu edition with the game Pokemon Yellow. 
Oh. And that was like the, my first video game, my first video game console as well system. because it, yeah, yeah system because it belonged to me like my brother had the n64 now i had this and i just love that game so much i probably i was so happy when i got it because i also loved i was now that the time when pokemon was the anime was coming out so right. i was watching it yeah. and now playing this and man it made me really feel like a pokemon trainer but then it got really hard because i was six <laughs> like <laughs> i'm like how am i supposed to know that you get cut from by going to ssn and then going, so I didn't know anything about that. So what did I do? You have to buy the book. Yeah. No, I didn't buy the book. I know you buy the book. So what yeah. did I do? I went to my brother. Mm-hmm. And I watched him beat the game, for, like beat that, you know, help me out. And when I got to the Elite Four, I'm like, here you go, bro. I can't beat this guy. That's all you again. And then when it came to capturing Mewtwo, I'm like, here you go. It's all, not knowing that <laughs> people, people, the, the Master Ball would just capture you. Yeah. That? But yeah, so that is my favorite game of all time. It's most mostly nostalgia and just reminds me of Man, I finally had something that was mine. Yeah, I had I had a similar sort of situation with this game that I did with Animal Crossing. I bought I played the original Pokemon when it came out. It was red and blue here yeah, in the states, blue, yeah. right? And then and we had both versions, so I played both of them, and so I basically played the same game twice, right? And then yellow came out, and I bought it again. Mm-hmm. So I basically beat this game three, three times. times. And at this point, I was just like, "All right, I'm done with this game." So I like drifted off mm. and i didn't get back into pokemon until recently um but it was funny what you mentioned about like getting stuck in the place there's like quest 64 is that game that i never got to be because i got stuck in some dungeon i didn't have enough items to pass through to survive a certain part and this is like my millennial rant that like this generation has it so good because they have like walkthroughs yeah, online you can scroll yeah, yeah speed run. back then you used to have to buy like a 20 dollar book on top of the price of the game in order, and, and I did for some of like, because they really had like trade secrets, things things you never figure out on your own. Like yeah. what order to do something and like where to get all the ruby pieces, all the, you know, all the hard pieces and all that, you know, that it takes several, you know, walkthroughs to be able to figure out for yourself. But now it's just all there. But I remember just playing and reading, playing and reading like side by side. Yeah, nowadays it's just solutions, your answers. Yeah. You have yeah. it right there. Back there was just frustration, rage, like, all right, whatever. Yeah, I try not to do that. I try to like beat it as much as possible, and if I can't, oh, well, that's what it I'll was. Go to, I'll go to YouTube if I have. Right, to. right. But it's so easy to go find the answer back then. You really were like, I'm not gonna get a book. It costs so much money. It could be another game. Mm-hmm. So you'd be like, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna figure it out. Unless it was a game that was just so complex that you really did get so much out of the book, like lore and stuff like that. Yeah, and so actually, I think it's funny uh, when you mentioned your story about uh, Christmas and waking up. Um, and getting that game on Christmas was because one of the games that I got, um, that I asked for for a while for Christmas was, um, Lord of the Rings, Return of the King for the SP. And you my, had an SP? Yeah, I had a blue SP. That's the one console I never got to have because I could never find one. Really? I feel like we had like 18. Yeah, months. you might find one in like yeah, my brother's one right room. Now, but my, right. my old one is there. Right. Oh my day. Yeah, and so, <laughs> and so with um, that was kind of like my own the first like own like handheld that I had mm-hmm. because the Game Boy Colors I just borrowed it from you guys. That's how I played it. Mm-hmm. But the SP was like my own mm-hmm. uh, my handheld console. Um, and so when I asked for this game, Return of the King, my the way that my uh, mom had I never quite really believed in Santa. I don't know why. Mm. Um, they never really like played into it but well, I remember asking for this game and they did their Christmas shopping really early so what I was what was happening was this was like two weeks before Christmas mm-hmm. and the players the presents were already there right and I remember my mom would go to work and I just I kind of cheated I went towards the gifts and I opened the gift in such a way that I can close it back yeah. Mm. Like, I just gently remove the tape. Oh, this I... isn't just normal every year growing up? That's what I did. <laughs> no, yeah, I this is, like, that. probably never the first time. I don't, I'm trying to remember another one, but this is the first time where, like, I went in, I took it, and I would play. It was the SP and the game. And so I had to do both of them. And I would play the game the whole entire day. And my mom would come back before, like, probably, like, half an hour before she get back. I'd put it back in. And... 
that's like one of the, like I just felt so sneaky doing that, mm. but it just elevated the experience for me. Um, and so on that same note, those type of games like Lord of the Rings, that medieval um, style of the game, that brought me to or brings me to my last game, uh, which is actually really recent, um, is The Witcher Three. Mm. The Witcher Three was a game that um, it's no longer on Game Pass. No, it's not. It's unfortunately, it is. they have it on sale like all the time. Yeah, because it's it, it's a really good game. And they have it like five dollars for it. They've also given it away for no, gold. Buy it right now. So The Witcher 3 was just one of those games that um, I heard a lot about. It had a lot of heavy praise. The one game of the year. Mm-hmm. There was just so many people talking about it. And I just put it off because I was like, oh man, it's so overhyped. And then eventually it was on Game Pass. And I played it. And it was so long. There was so much to do. But I, I, had, I mean, I had time. At, at that point in time, I had a lot of uh, time to give. And the just how big the world is the characters the story the different side quests and missions you have to do that for like that was just so um different for me uh kind of like because i i felt that attachment to the lord of the rings game right they were so kind of like uh constricted kind of like you couldn't do a lot so when like i come to a game like the witcher that was just that was awesome it was like sneaking around uh, during Christmas and, and taking that game taking that game out and playing it all day which was happening multiple days because the game is so long but worth it yeah I haven't I haven't played this and I hear nothing but great things about it but it's like I'm kind of a fake gamer nowadays I eat adult gamer where I'm like all these long form titles I don't have the time to sink them in so I have to avoid them even though they're I know they're great because I know that either I'm not gonna finish them I'm not gonna get too far into yeah. them like I have cyberpunk and I'm waiting to move through it, but it's just, it's so daunting. And I have games like fallout and, and, uh, elder scrolls. I haven't played them because I know that it's like, you, you kind of need, you kind of need like a part-time job to, to complete mm-hmm. them and yeah. complete them. And I, I just, I can't, but I've heard great things. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta buy it. I just saw that it's, old, it's, a, it's on sale right now. $7.99. <laughs> And I think I have a a Microsoft uh, gift card, so I might do that tonight. Really quick, um, you know, we're the summer, so some people have time to play video games. So what game in your list would you recommend for our listeners to play? I'll start. For me, if you haven't done it, Stardew Valley. Check it out. It's adorable. You'll love it. And it's uh, it's one of my favorite games. So I know you, if you're like me, who like adorable games, pixelated games, it's just for you. What about you, Gabe? Star Wars Galaxy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> can you play? No, you oh, can. Okay. You can. Yeah. 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 Um, the game I would recommend uh, is definitely going to be uh, The Witcher 3. The Witcher 3? Yeah. All right. I guess I'm going to go back to the, the beginning of my list. Uh, if you haven't played this game, Burnout Paradise, <laughs> I've bought in it for every system it's been released on. The remastered version is great. If you have a Nintendo Switch, it's on sale often, but either way, it's worth, I think it's like $30 retail now. I bought it for like 10 or 15 just the other day. And I, I remember asking um, asking my brother-in-law, um, should I get this game? Because like I already have it on Xbox. And they're like, no, no, you're not going to play. You're not going to play it on Switch. <laughs> and I was like, I don't care what you think. And then I just bought it on the spot. And I will make the time for it at some point because it's the handheld experience. You know, Burnout Paradise, if you haven't played it. And you just don't play it around me. <laughs> <laughs> One more thing, really quick. I just want to know what is it, what's your favorite video game console of all time? Just for me, Ooh. Game Boy Advance. My Game Boy Advance was my first handheld. I'm pretty sure. I saved up my own money to get it, and I went and I bought one. And like me and my brother bought one together, and we became so obsessed with it that we saved up to buy a second one. Is that your favorite? Is that your favorite? Uh, no, I just want to yeah. yeah, comment on yours, but yeah. yeah, but just wow, the Game Boy Advance brings back so much memories. Also. I think that's a hard question, but I think I'm gonna have to go with 360. Okay. Yeah. 360, like there's just that was like I was in high school mm-hmm. during that time, and I had so much time between playing soccer and then that's when I got into FIFA. That's when I got into a lot of sports games and Call of Duty and all that stuff too. Um, 
for me, I, I think it has to be 360, especially with Rock Band as well. Right. Mm-hmm. That was such a huge uh, time uh, for gaming, for me at least. Yeah. For my, did, did, did you ever have any Red Ring issues? Twice. Twice? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think my first one, because I always wait a couple of years before I jumped in. I think my first one was like a the 360 Elite, the black one. Mm. So I know the first 360 I had in my life was was Link's brother. Um, and so he had the red range, but I never had it. So I really had like a flawless experience. Mm. I never had any problems. So mm. I love the 360. But man, I think if I had to choose one system, GameCube's close. GameCube's really close. But Sega Dreamcast. Sega mm. Dreamcast was my yeah. favorite system. I bought this. Crazy taxi. Yes, Soul Calibur, Vampire Warrior. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. what was that game? Um, Cannon Spike, uh, Power Stone, Revolution. Um, um, Jet Set Radio. Jet Set Radio. Uh, just so much, so many great games, and I bought this system for fifty dollars off of a friend. He's like, I have a Dreamcast. There's nothing to play on it. I'm like, give me, give me. Um, and then like and then like months like just a few weeks or months after that they discontinued the Dreamcast and then all the games plummeted in price. I bought up everything. Then I found out how to mod my first system. Then I started importing games. I got Fire Pro Wrestling, mm-hmm. um, and I had to download from the internet every menu, like everything that you did in the game, because yeah. the whole game was in Japanese, and I had to download like every menu and follow it on paper one to choose stuff. But just the Sega Dreamcast, I had like every game for it. It was amazing. It was the first time that like the system was more powerful than the arcade. And it was really that it was one, that one had Sonic Adventure, right? Yeah, Sonic Adventure one and two. Okay. Shenmue. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna change, but uh, it's <laughs> like A and B. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. No, mine was a game, a game Boy Advance because after so many years of playing Game Boy, like because it was square, it would leave Jesus marks on your hand. Yeah. <laughs> whereas, Stigmata. Yeah, yeah. Whereas, whereas advanced, it was, it was curved, so it was beautiful. I love it. Yeah, that. it was great. And then they went back to the Switch, I mean, the, the, the SP, and then, like, oh, that hurts. And then, <laughs> and then the micro. That's what I thought. You said SP, yes. I thought you meant micro. Oh, okay. And yeah, no, I don't think anybody got the yeah, micro. Yeah, no one got the micro. <laughs> friend of mine no, yeah, yeah. A friend of mine had the micro, and I was like, I'll play it. And I played it like No, yeah, yeah. I have, yeah, I have this, yeah. Yeah, you're, we, you did get the SP up. Okay. But the micro one, yeah, I thought no one ever got that. Yeah, no, I don't. Very few people. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, guys. Well, that ends our show for today. We we'll hope to see you guys next week when we talk about our five, our top five uh, shows of all time. I mean, yeah. yeah. Yeah, basically. Yeah, all right. Cool, cool. All right, guys. We'll have a good day and see you next week. And until then, keep on searching. <laughs>